Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sake Revolution. This is America's first sake podcast, and when you know it, I'm your host, John Puma, from the Sake Notes, also from the Internet Sake Discord, and Reddit's r slash sake community. And I'm your host, Timothy Sullivan. I'm a sake samurai. I'm a sake educator, as well as the founder of the Urban Sake website. And every week, John and I will be here tasting and chatting about all things sake and doing our best to make it fun and easy to understand. Hey, John. Hey, Tim. What do you hear? (laughs) Well, (laughs) you know, I really liked our last episode focusing on the funk, funky packaging. Do you (laughs) remember that? I do. Uh, Funky packaging is very fresh in my mind. (laughs) I distinctly remember the the weirdly... um, uh, in, perhaps inappropriate juice box <laughs> and the sake that honestly was better than it had any right to be coming out of a juice <laughs> a box juice or box. a straw. <laughs> like, I was like very taken aback. I was like, wait a minute, this is actually legitimate. This is pretty good. Yeah. So oh, what's, what's today? Capri Sun? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. No, today is a- another funky packaging. I uh-huh. just kind of got mini obsessed <laughs> Many upset. I found something pretty darn funky, which I dropped off to you. And today we're going to explore another round of Mm. funky packaging for sake. Funky packaging. (laughs) I went to the manufacturer's website for this funky packaging, and they say right on their webpage that this is the future of sake. The future of sake. Yes. All right. That's a pretty... um... That's a lofty statement, I think, right? Pretty bold statement, but Pretty I am bold. excited to get started. Hmm. Yeah, this is a sake that I'm pretty sure we have featured before, just never in this packaging, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so so what we've what is what is on my desk right now, what Timothy has given me is actually not too far off from the Capri Sun joke I made earlier. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you yeah, remember last week we talked a little bit about, we reminisced a little bit about Capri Sun, the, uh, the pouch, what, what you had a straw, you stab through the straw and then, and then you, you drink your, your beverage while we were having our juice box. This week, Tim went and found a bag, a, a bag that looks a little, I'm not going to I'm not going to lie. It looks a little, it makes me think of Capri Sun, just a much, much larger <laughs> one. And in this case, we're not using a straw to stab through it, although I, if I were particularly thirsty, I guess I could. But this is a, this is a, a 1500 milliliter bag of sake. <laughs> yes. And if it a... wasn't sitting on my desk, I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> yes, this is called a smart pouch. Smart pouch. Okay. Yes. It is a 1500 milliliter <laughs> pouch of sake as you said almost yeah. almost up to a full isho bean size and it weighs about five pounds i could do some <laughs> curls with this <laughs> um, and yeah i guess i could <laughs> yeah to give our listeners a an image of what we're looking at here it is basically a freestanding plastic pouch sealed at the top and it has a spout coming off of it very much like uh, bag and box wine, right? Like yes. the boxed wine with the spout. We've all seen yeah. that. And if you look inside the boxed wine, there's like a plastic bladder in there, right? With a spout yes. coming off of it. Yes. Um, and it looks to me like this, the smart pouch is that without the box <laughs> and uh, with sake instead of wine. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the type of packaging that this is, I think, inspired by is what is known as BIB or... BIB. Yeah. There's a Wikipedia page dedicated to BIB, which is bag in box alcohol, bag Mm -hmm. in box alcohol. And it's similar to the juice box design that we had last week. This is a similar polyethylene material. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's food safe and it has a spout coming out and it has a unique fold on the bottom so it can kind of stand upright, right? Mm-hmm. It can yeah, like yeah. stand on its own. Which I believe the Capri Sun had the, that, that general shape. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> you could stand it up because you had to stand it up because you had, you know you was like you're, you're punch the hole in it with the straw and then it sits on your on your table next to your lunch. Yes, I don't. That's true. If it, this yeah. was, if this was a Capri Sun, that the basic shape is similar. You're absolutely right. It had like that fold on the bottom so it could stand up. It's just a really big ver- like really big <laughs> significantly yeah. large. I don't know how many milliliters were in a Capri Sun, but I'm going to guess it wasn't 1500. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should also let the cat out of the bag about which producer and which sake this is. So do you want to give us the sake name and the stats? Absolutely. So um, this is a, a, an old friend of ours, the Kikasui Funaguchi uh, this is their Nama Genshu Honjozo. Now, typically, this is a sake that is sold, uh, is bought and sold in a can, a small, like a one cup sized can, 180 milliliters. Uh, and they decided that that is not enough for some people. And so they need to, <laughs> they need a sack. Uh, and that's what we have here. They need, a, specifically, they need a smart pouch. Now, um, just to give you the uh, the stats on that sake, that that legendary sake, uh, this is uh, this is one of those Genshus that that has a capital G Genshu. It is a nineteen percent alcohol by volume sake. Uh, the rice is is a, it's it is not specified, but it is a Niigata prefecture rice because uh, Kikisui Shuzo is of course in Niigata. Um, that rice is milled down to 70% of its original size, and the sake meter value is plus two. Uh, and I, I just loved him, how they, they've jumped straight from one cup to nearly, very nearly a magnum, like very nearly an isobin, like just went right for it. <laughs> you know, the interesting point there, the thing that connects the can with this pouch is the fact that this is a Nama, right? Right. Kikusui says that this sake is the first commercially available Nama and it was released in 1972. Wow. Really? So, yes. That's what they huh. say on their website. So mm. I think that when we talk about funky packaging, we have the classic can, which has been around for decades, mm-hmm. and then they've introduced this pouch. So What's the connection with the pouch and the can? And I think the first one is to protect against light, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because both the pouch and that can are completely opaque. Absolutely. And the writing on the pouch itself has some key selling points that make it especially suited for unpasteurized sake, according to Kikusui. The first one is that it easily fits in the fridge, and I had mine stored in the fridge very easily. The pouch has three holes on the top, which can fit your fingers, so you get a grip if you need to lift it. It's really very handy, don't you think? I I do, I do. And this is a sake that uh, I'm going to mention here. I think like it was like during during like you know lockdown era, we went and did a little barbecue. We went down by the down into the park and, and grilled some things out on the public grills there and we went really well with the grilled food with the, you know with the the hot dogs and the burgers and all that and this pouch has a nice little to go aspect to it with the handles as you pointed out it's it seems to me like great for a situation like that <laughs> have have a bunch of friends have some cups and then you're you know you got your your pouch of sake and you're good It's so funny you should say that because (laughs) I actually found a YouTube video, which we will link in the show notes. Uh And I encourage everyone to visit SakeRevolution.com to watch this one minute video. But there is a Japanese advertisement that was released at the time of this product launch of the pouch. Mm -hmm. And there are four Japanese ladies in a park sitting at a small table eating snacks and one of them pulls the pouch out of her purse. <laughs> Wait, this pouch fit in her purse? Yes. <laughs> that was a hefty purse. Yes, it's a big purse. This, it's still, as you pointed out, it is still 1,500 milliliters. This is yeah. not a small bag. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. Anyway, she pulls it out and she starts dispensing sake. And they happen to have these cut crystal glasses in the park <laughs> for their picnic. And they're drinking kikusui <laughs> from the pouch. And it is absolutely wonderful. 
Uh, so please be sure to visit our show notes to see the Japanese smart pouch advertising <laughs> video. You don't want to miss it. I it's delightful. <laughs> uh, but I guess the key point is that it blocks the air and it blocks the light from spoiling your namasake. Mm-hmm. And this type of packaging really does help prevent oxidation from affecting either a wine or a sake. Mm-hmm. It kind of uses gravity when you pick it up and you dispense using the spout the gravity pulls against it and it doesn't let any air in. So the pouch gets thinner and thinner as you use it, you know, so there's no Mm -hmm. air going in. It's a one-way spout. So it's a really super clever design. That's really cool. It's very interestingly, both reasonably sized and enormous. (laughs) Hey, hey, JP, I got a question for you. When it comes to wine, are you a glass bottle with a cork only person or do you think bib like bag in box wine can be good is that something you buy for yourself or do you think that is not an elegant way to serve wine what do you think um well honestly i haven't done a whole lot of boxed wine in my time i think i've had it like once or twice uh, it was a little earlier on in my in my 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 drinking career I don't know if that's the word we're going to use. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, I didn't know a lot about wine when I had it. I thought it was fine. I have heard that, generally speaking, you you have a lower quality wine in the back and box, but I don't know if there's any truth to it. You know, does that make sense to you? It does. Yeah, I think people have preconceived notions, but mm. similar to breweries releasing higher-end sakes in one cups, I think mm-hmm. that there are some wineries that release high-quality wines in the pouch, in the bag, in box. Mm -hmm. So boxed wine has a little bit of an image problem, just like cup sake does, don't you think? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. But it makes me question, is it just an image problem or is there something wrong with this technology? It seems Mm. like it's really good at preserving the contents. Should be. And the other thing that they say on the a Kikusui website, the very end of the video, that little one minute video I was talking about, yes. they show the woman folding up the bag and putting it in the recycling and it's thin as a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, it goes from being this heavy thing to something you can recycle very easily. I think that the time has come for <laughs> us to crack open. Is that what you do with this? You crack this open? <laughs> <laughs> Don't cut across the top, John. That's not okay, how we get good. into this. So I don't, you don't want me to go get my straw. <laughs> no. <laughs> all uh, right. All right. All right. I'm going to. All right. So, so when I'm looking at this, it looks like that spout you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Uh, it's got a little foil topper at the bottom. I, I think just to kind of keep it, keep it clean. And then is a plastic, uh, like a plastic tab that's kind of built into the, into the plunger. Yeah. So it's I like think a I need collar. to it's yeah, like a collar yeah. that goes around to keep the the um, lever from moving down. So I'm going to peel that off right now. All right, okay, I'm I got it. Off. Okay, I got mine here. I'm like, oh, oh, hey, all right. This this was, ooh, okay. It goes all the way around. Yeah, this was very easy to take off. And then the, <laughs> there's a little, as you said, there's a little foil tab yeah. right where the the uh, sake comes out and it that is. just keeps the mouth of the spout clean. So I peeled that off yeah. and now, now in theory, this thing's ready for business, right? <laughs> All right. So yeah, are we ready? <laughs> I think so. Now, well, before we, before we start though, I need to, we need to tell everybody at home that we are, we are drinking this in very slightly different styles. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I've got my stemless wine glass for this and Tim is going to be having this, um, in a tumbler, uh, you know, basically a rocks glass with with some ice. It is the famous clear Tim Sullivan ice. And on the back of the pouch, they do say in Japanese that this should be served chilled or on the rocks. So we're going to do both. Yes. So I have enjoyed Kikusui Funaguchi in the can for years mm-hmm. and <laughs> having had it many times. My favorite way to drink it is on a giant clear ice cube. Mm-hmm. 
and have it be chilled and diluted mm -hmm. just a bit. So this is my preferred method of drinking this particular sake. I've never squirted it out of a pouch before, but... <laughs> I don't think I've ever not had it in the can. Oh, so you drink it out of the can. I drink it out of the can. Yeah. That's, it is, it is, that's yeah. what you should do, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, I have my cup in hand, the pouch. I've moved the pouch to the edge of my desk. So the spout is hanging over the side. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my cup and I'm going to put it underneath and I'm going to hit the button. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Tim. Um, well, um, it flies out of there pretty fast. So. <laughs> it's it's less of a gentle pour and more of like a fire hydrant <laughs> sort of experience. How smart do you have to be to operate the smart pouch? Not not very. You just have to be prepared for the volume that's going to come out of it. Remember, gravity you mentioned is what's yes. powering this, and gravity yes. is a powerful beast. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, we, we generally, when we're doing this, we pour like a relatively small amount into the glass. And this thing was like, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> okay, I'm okay. going to pour mine and try to get it to the microphone. Here we go. All righty. Well, I have a feeling you didn't plunge that one all the way down like I did. <laughs> you learned from my mistakes. Yeah, I uh, I was a little slower on the plunge. Yeah. Well, I I just went. I thought it was a binary switch, so I. <laughs> it was, and that sake was like freedom. That's, you hear that, John? Yeah, that's yeah, that's the is that, that is the, the trademark Tim Sullivan ice cube. That is the trademark Tim Sullivan <laughs> crystal clear ice cube. Oh, I love it. All right. Well, I smell Funaguchi. Yes. Should we give it a taste? Um. Well, do you want to talk a little bit about what we smell? Oh yeah. So. Yeah, it's, this is a sake we've had many times before, and it does capture the the experience of taking in the Funaguchi. It's um, it is very like on my I don't know about it on your side, but on my nose, it's it's very um, uh, boozy. Like I'm getting a lot of that, mm. like that little tingle in your in your nostrils when you bring it in. Like you can tell that it's a high high alcohol beverage. Yeah, this is. It's worth noting that this is, as you said at the, earlier, it's 19 percent alcohol, mm -hmm. but it's also Aru Tenshu or alcohol added sake. So this is a, not a Junmai style. This is a Honjozo style. That means distilled alcohol has been added to this. And I think that that little bit of um, ethanol does come through on the aroma, but that's part of the charm of this sake. It's known as a boozy strong sake. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons I have it on the rocks. I also smell a little bit of like a cotton candy smell. There's some uh, sweetness there. Mm -hmm. There is a, yeah, there is a bit, definitely a little bit of a sweetness as well mm. from the distance. Like when I bring it like kind of close, it's like, oh, you know, the first thing I got was that ethanol and then you get closer and you're like, oh, and, and some, and some sweetness to it. Yeah. All right. So I think we're ready to, to have a sip now. Okay. I'm going to take a sip. My, my glass is very clanky with the ice cube in it. So I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> go for it. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. This is such a fun sake. It is a fun sake, and it. I think primarily it comes across as rich and strong. Mm -hmm. It's very bold, right? Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Now, you've got the ice in there. We've had it in there for a little bit. Have, do you find that it's kind of taming it a little bit for you? Not yet. Not yet? <laughs> <laughs> it, needs, it needs a minute? Needs a minute. Mm. As I said before, I really like the ice cube in there. It keeps it nice and chilled and crisp, and it mm -hmm. also dilutes it a little bit. Uh, it is a little clanky in my rocks glass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I really enjoy it that way. I do think this is a sake that, in addition to the, the idea that the ice is going to, to mellow it out a little bit, I'm also of the opinion that having this sake particularly cold or a little bit warm is fun. And it, it lends itself to, to playing with temperature a little bit. Mm. Um, I think that it's right now I have it kind of like, you know, we've been recording It's sitting on my desk. It's, it's cold, but it is not ice cold. And I think that this sake is great when it's ice cold. So I'm a little jealous that you have an ice cube in yours. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think yeah. when a sake that has higher alcohol, when it's, it's like, you know, when you really chill a martini and it brings yeah. out the crispness of it. Mm -hmm. If a martini gets closer to room temperature, the booze really comes forward and it's not as enjoyable. Right. 
I think there's a similar concept at play here when it's nice and icy cold. It just makes it crisper on the palate. Yeah. Um, but it is one of the strongest sakes out there. <laughs> it really does pack there, a punch, yeah. right? Yeah. Is there like a legal limit to the alcohol that could be in sake? There is. Oh, what is yes. it? Yes. It is the the law states in Japan it has uh-huh. to be below twenty two percent. So that means twenty one point nine nine nine. So we've got some some room. <laughs> we have some wiggle room. Yes. <laughs> they can they can increase this all they want. It's great. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is such a classic, and I. Uh, as I was saying earlier, like I love the idea of like you just grabbing one of these, going to mm. like a, a a cookout or something. <laughs> this goes really well with your Fourth of July barbecue uh, array. I think I think yeah. it goes fabulously with things like that with your uh, with your hot dogs, your burgers, your uh, whatever else you're gonna have Mac over and there. Cheese. Mac and cheese, they're fine. I yeah. I don't even eat cheese. But that sounds that sounds like a burger. <laughs> <laughs> well. I, I really agree with you 100%. What makes this approachable for that type of food is the weight, the body, and the richness of this sake. Mm-hmm. It's juicy, it's strong. And if you had something like, you know, a burger dripping with barbecue sauce or something like that, it is just so good. It would be so good. Yeah. Ribs or. Maybe some uh, hot dogs. Mm. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Now I want. Now I want ribs, Tim. What have we done? <laughs> do you have a Do you have a grill set up where you live? No, I'm in I an live apartment. in an apartment. <laughs> yeah, I can't either. I thought maybe sometimes apartment buildings have a shared grill, but yeah. we don't, we don't have that in our apartment. Me either. Yeah. Um, and like the, some of the units in my building have um terraces. Oh. But there are strict no grilling on the terraces rules. Oh man. But I think they're worried about burning down the building or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's prudent yeah. you know what are you gonna do but i do have a park nearby that does have um public grill oh. so all you have to do is bring uh, technically you're just bringing like your briquettes and and whatnot well i'll just wait for my, my invitation <laughs> <laughs> well, i haven't done this in several years but maybe we need to bring it back now if, that the funaguchi pouch exists <laughs> exactly if you if you provide the burgers and the hot dogs i'll bring the pouch <laughs> uh-huh i think i think you might have already purchased the pouch wait a minute <laughs> now john what do you think about the size of this pouch it is in addition to the pouch itself being funky the size is also funky like what is up with 1500 milliliters what do you what do you think um to me, when I look at this thing, it looks like they wanted to, to mm-hmm. get like a sizable amount of sake because if 1500 really just ain't messing around. Um, and they wanted something that would be relatively portable. The video showed this one pulling it out of a purse. So it's got to be <laughs> target target size smaller than a purse, right? <laughs> or a smaller than that woman's purse, at least. And that's just, you know, I, I think that works. I think that uh, I think that's what they were aiming for. They wanted to get something that would be like as much sake as, as makes sense and then something that's still portable. I think if you go bigger than this, it gets a little heavy, it gets a little unwieldy, maybe, you know, it's into also maybe the, the integrity mm. of the pouch becomes questionable since it's not in a box. You've got to, you know, take into account that. Yeah, I mean, the standard put on bottle it. size in Japan is 720 ml. And if you had two bottles, that would be. Mm-hmm. 1440 but they're giving us 1500 so it's a little bit strange that it's it's just above what two mm-hmm. bottles would be and the isho bean the 1.8 liter is 2.5 bottles mm-hmm. so yeah it's it probably has to do with the packaging manufacturer don't you think like there's probably set sizes for these things and if you buy it from a uh, supplier of liquid packaging, there's probably a limit to what they make. And it's not geared mm-hmm. necessarily towards the weird sake measurements that they have. So I think that, yeah, they probably did get, you know, you're, I don't think they had these custom made. I think that somebody probably was producing something like this and they were like, yeah. hey, I want to get in on that. Yeah. Yeah. What size you got? And I just noticed <laughs> that there is a giant picture of the can on the pouch. Yes. 
<laughs> it's not just it's not just the logo. <laughs> They're like, no, it's this. It is this this can that you know. Yeah, well, but bigger. <laughs> I, I have to say, I um, really like this. Mm-hmm. Like the the um, the juice box with it's, the straw was not the best way for me to drink sake out of a little a little kindergarten straw like that. But this, like, lift mm-hmm. up the pouch and push the button. It's pretty nice. <laughs> it's a party in a bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gotcha. I I, um, yeah, this is great. And I, like I said, this is perfect to, like, go in. And again, this food, this, speci- rather, and again, this sake specific is is great mm. for, you know, your, your yep. 4th of July barbecue. Yeah, Coming up. It's very <laughs> entertaining and shareable sake, don't you think? It's like not the fanciest or most nuanced sake on the market, but it's still really enjoyable and great for sharing. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've encountered people who um, who didn't enjoy yeah. Funaguchi the first time they had it. <laughs> uh, and if I did, I wouldn't trust those people. The only thing I have to say is that I always warn people that it packs a punch. Mm-hmm. So if people are sipping on this like regular sake yes. and not using ice or, you know, not diluting it with anything, I always say, you know, just be aware this packs a punch. I like how it it sits on the counter like a Capri Sun pouch. Like you can stand it up and it's really, that's mm-hmm. super convenient. And if you drop it, you don't have to worry about it smashing on the... F- like, I love that, too. I, For my job, I transport a lot of bottles. Yeah. And I put them in my suitcase. Yes, I wrap them in bubble wrap. And you have to be very careful transporting glass. And this is like, you know, you can just throw this, throw this in your suitcase and you don't have to worry about it breaking, which is really great. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, like, you know, this bag, I'm... I'm not going to pretend to know exactly what this bag weighs, but I'm going <laughs> to yes. bet you that it weighs less than glass. So the the weight of this bag, which again we mentioned this at the front, isn't pearl. This is not light. Um, it is, yeah, all sake. Yeah, and you know, and some and some plastic. That is it. You know, it is really you're, the weight is all the important stuff. So when it's empty, when it's done, you can just fold it up. And yeah, if you're in Japan, apparently you can put it in recycling. And <laughs> as you. As you pour from the the pouch, from the spout, uh, it's a one-way mm-hmm. valve, as we mentioned, so the, no air goes in. The pouch collapses thinner and thinner as you use it, and mm-hmm. I really like that, too. It does protect against oxygen, and, and I like just giving, like, if you want a little top off, you can just squeeze the tab, and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> love it there you go a little extra here we go uh and you know and and also you can just like throw this whole bag onto some ice um in the in the cooler and boom you know every time you need it, you can pull it out pour some out not bad right all right john we've we've explored another dimension of funky packaging what do you, i i like this new series what do you think i i like this new series too i i'm wondering how long you're going to be able to keep this up to <laughs> i know it's it's been it, it is fun i had a good time with the 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 juice box uh, but this is a very enormously practical <laughs> right potentially an improvement i don't know i love <laughs> it this is great <laughs> i love it too and i think uh if if other even more premium sakes came in this packaging. Like I would definitely be interested. Like as a consumer, I would Mm -hmm. vote for this. I think this is convenient, easy to use, protects the sake. It's, it's just, there's a lot of practical advantages to this. I think there are, there are, there are, um, yeah. You know, I would love to see more, um, to see more stuff like this go on. Yeah. So we'll, We'll see in the next few years if this is the future of sake, as Kikusui thinks it will be. Mm. Um, but I do hope to see it in, with a few other with a few other brands. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. I'm excited. All right. <laughs> well, John, so great to taste with you. And we'll have to see where our funky packaging takes us next. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for uh, all the great uh, sake chit chat today. 
And I also want to send out a special thank you to all of our listeners. Thanks again for tuning in today. A special hi, hello, and thank you to our patrons as well. We are a listener-supported show, and if you would like to join our community on Patreon, please visit patreon.com slash sake revolution to learn more. We hope to see you there. And as a quick little reminder, all of our episodes have a corresponding page on the sake revolution website at sake revolution.com. Uh, we've got show notes. This one's got a video with a, 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 apparently a, a, a bunch of ladies having a really good time in a park uh, and, and then recycling very responsibly. Um, we always have pictures of the bottles. We always have details on the sake we drank. Uh, and we always have a transcript, which is actually a pretty, cool and we also have a link to our store there where we've got t-shirts we've got stickers um and we keep saying that one day there's going to be more and i mean it <laughs> i mean it this time especially now having said that how, how are we going to take us out tim i don't like <laughs> you want to raise your pouch what do you want to do <laughs> yeah all right that's how we're going to do it raise your pouch <laughs> remember to keep drinking sake potentially out of a pouch and Come on!